Well, we have the lovely, talented Miss Cynthia Bailey here with us to chat about all things health, beauty, wellness. I mean, the multifaceted actress, entrepreneur, mother, just ugh, the fabulousness that is <laughs> Cynthia Bailey. So thank you for, so much for joining us on behalf of New You. My name is Dontara Terrell, and we're so excited that you're our next cover star. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. For this cover to come out. You have no <laughs> idea. I've been waiting for it. I am too. We got a little sneak peek. So I'm so, you know, excited. The pictures came out great. And look, speaking of, you know, just you being a model and just being in the beauty world, um, what would you say is your best beauty advice? Um, the best beauty advice I could give is just maintenance. You know, I'm a woman of a certain age. Don't wait. Maintenance and prevention. Okay, don't wait till you get, you know, until you get 55, like I am. Uh, hello, I just celebrated my 55th birthday in February to start taking care of yourself. Um, and then when you do start taking care of yourself, maintain it. So, you know, if you're in your 20s and 30s, you know, start now. Don't wait until, you know, things become an issue before you start trying to correct the issue. Jump in there before it becomes an issue. Right. Try to be proactive instead of reactive. There you go. <laughs> Better myself. And, you know, just speaking of self-care, um, what are some self-care practices that bring you the most joy? Number one is for sure massage. You know, Mother's Day is coming up and I am one old proud mom, but I can just tell you this. I'm not a balloon girl. I'm not a flower girl. I don't want no box of chocolates. I don't want, and I definitely don't want stuff animal. Okay. Straight up massages, like spa. I am a spa girl. I love facials. I love, you know, massages and not the 60 minute. I need that 90 minute. I'm all about decompressing and rebooting and resetting. So my absolute favorite is, is spa. Love a spa day. And you have to, we have to get out of the mind of thinking that, um, you know, it's a treat for us. We have to like learn to work it into our regular life. You know, for me, you know, I work a lot. I travel a lot. I don't really have a set schedule. So I just go hard pretty much most of the, most of the time. So when I can cut it off or shut it down, I shut it all the way down and I try to treat myself if I could, if I had a choice, I would definitely, you know, do a spotty once a week. Like I really would like mm -hmm. at least once a week. I wish I could do one every day, but at least once a week, three times a month for sure. Well, I'm so glad you found peace. I'm so glad that you are living life to the fullest. I feel like a lot of times, you know, we put an age limit on mm -hmm. certain things and we have to like, oh, if I don't have it by this time, X, Y, Z. So I feel like you're like a prime example, like, girl, it's never too late. You can always, it doesn't matter what age you are, you know? Absolutely. And, and that's such a mistake that we do that to ourselves. Like I really don't let age determine anything that I do in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, even me going into this next chapter, leaving, you know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and uh, taking that leap of faith at 55, you know, in an industry that is pretty much a young industry, you know, I'm like starting, you know, starting my acting career. And, um, you know, at this age is, you know, not really the way it usually works out, but I don't, I'm not defined by my age. I, I believe that, you know, I'm more of a girl who's all about timing, about, you know, doing things at the right time, you know, God's time, God's speed. And this is my time. Um, throughout my modeling career, you know, I had several acting opportunities that I did, you know, pursue, you know, going all the way back to the Cosby show, uh, did a movie with Sandra Bernhardt. That's how I know her. We have a great relationship. She's a friend of mine, you know, till this day. And, um, and then from there, you know, now I feel like this is the time in my life where it is time for me to pursue my acting career. It wasn't when I was in my twenties and my 30s, or even my 40s. This is the time now for me. And you have to respect the process. The process is, I had to, you know, I had to get from Alabama to New York to start my modeling career. That had to happen. And then I had to move from New York City to Atlanta to start my reality TV career. That had to happen. And now I'm done with that for now. Who knows? I'll never say never about going back. Uh, now I have to start my acting career. And those things have to line up the way they do because I wouldn't be ready. You know, all the experiences that I've had throughout my journey have made me the, the happy woman that I am now, today. 
You know what I'm saying? So I had to go through all of those experiences to be who I am now, which is so great because I'm actually able to pull from all of those experiences as an actress. Right. So was was there ever a time when you didn't trust the process or you tried to like sort of fight the timing of when things didn't work out as you anticipated or hoped or anything? And if so, how did you overcome that? Whew. You know what? I, I think we all have moments of like, oh my God, you know, what is happening? Why are things playing out the way that they are playing out for me? But at the end of the day, I think you need those moments of where you're being tested, where things just seem like they're like just hard for no reason. I think every day, you know, the first thing I say when I wake up in the morning is not my will, God's will be done. Last thing I say at night when I go to sleep is not my will, God's will be done. And I say that no matter what my age is, no matter what's going on, no matter what I've been through, I'm going to have it because it's for me. It's God's will. That helps me to be happy for, for other people that are doing amazing things because that's their thing, that God wants that for them. And if he wanted me to have it, he would give it to me. <laughs> so, you know, and I think that's a beautiful space to be in, to be able to celebrate yourself and also be able to celebrate other people who are doing um, amazing things. But that also goes back into living in the world of abundance. It's just all yes. the, the Yes, well, yes. Uh, again, you know, I'm very proud of my age. Um, I am a woman of a certain age and I own every every bit of it. I do pride myself on being inspiration for people who feel like, oh my God, you know, I'm never going to find love again. I'm in my 50s. Oh my God, you know, I, you know, it's too late to follow my dreams. I, I can't leave this situation and start all over and become an actress now. When I decided to leave my very humble beginnings in Alabama, small town Alabama, Tuscumbia, Alabama, it was a leap of faith. I didn't know what was, was going to happen when I got to New York. I didn't know if I was going to have success, but I was never afraid to go for it. I was never afraid to follow my dreams. And when I met my, my ex-husband, uh, Peter Thomas, he was living in Atlanta when we met and fell in love. It was like, you should move to Atlanta. I had no plans on being on a reality show. I just was like following my heart and was like, you know what? Hey, I'm just going to go for it. You know, I can still, you know, do my modeling from wherever at this point. So, you know, we had already started moving in more of the digital world and all that stuff. So I think your bigger moments of when things happen for you are probably your most uncomfortable when you just have to go for it. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to it just being like a comfortable situation all the time. So to my people, to the people that follow me, that I do inspire and I do motivate by being this little fearless Pisces warrior in the world, um, you get one life. You just only get one. And the difference between someone who really, you know, wants to win, um, who really has that ambition and that success to just keep going is they just keep going. Like, I'm a very positive person. I want to quickly, you know, switch gears. Um, I I had fibroids as well. So thank you for being a huge advocate and just speaking out about your experience. Um, but I want to know, what do, what do you think people get wrong about how fibroids affect your mental health? And what do you want people to know about women who have to go? Um, I think women need to know that fibroids affects you physically and mentally, 100%. I struggled with fibroids for years. And I will say, I honestly don't know what was worse. The physical um, part of just having these heavy periods, um, just being anemic, um, or really just being in kind of a dark state of just, um, I don't like to throw the word depression around, but it's like exhausting. I can say that like, you know, just feeling tired does make you a little depressed if you like, you're like, okay, I got sleep, <laughs> you know, I'm working out, I'm doing all these things, I'm eating right, and I still just don't feel 100%. And fibroids just, if you're dealing with fibroids and they are severe enough, you just, no matter what you do, you just never really feel 100%. And that's frustrating. You know, it's like going on a diet and doing everything and never losing weight. You know, at some point, you just want to feel good. You just like, I deserve to wake up and feel good. I don't want this big bloated stomach. You know, as a celebrity, I stayed on the baby bump list. Every time I walked out my door, it was like, oh my God, congratulations. I'm like, for what? 
She's like, you're pregnant, right? I'm like, no, I have fibroids, you know? Mm-hmm. And I would have to explain that all the time. And I'm really glad that um, I made the decision to talk about fibroids on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and actually show my UFE procedure, my uterine fibroid embolization procedure. And at the time when I suggested it, the show wasn't really sure it was that big of a deal, to be honest. They were like, well, do people really care about this? And I'm like, well, yeah, they actually do. As a matter of fact, the majority of the cast actually has fibroids. They just choose not to talk about it, which is completely up to them. They've all like dealt with it, most of them, at least, like like I said, about 90% of them. So I was like, this is something that, you know, at the time we were a Black um, ensemble show, um, you know, fibroids definitely affects Black women the most. And when I tell you, I was on Housewives for a consistent peach holder for 11 years, and it is one of the biggest things anywhere I go in the world, out of the country, anywhere where people come up to me and like, oh my God, I got my fibros taken out because I saw you talking about it. I never talked about it. I never told my husband about it. I never, no one knew I was dealing with it. And after I saw you talking about it and the way you, you know, you talked to Peter about it and he embraced you, it motivated me to just go and get something done. I'm so glad that I talked about that. And the good news about me having that conversation and even, you know, working with um, USA Fibroid Centers, uh, I'm an ambassador for them. It's although I still want to keep the conversation going because I feel like I was on the forefront of, you know, celebrities actually really coming clean (laughs) and talking about it and saying, hey, you know, I know it looks great and everything. I look great and everything is good, but this is what I'm dealing with behind the scenes, literally. So, and you mentioned actually something about premenopause. So, what what are some of the symptoms going into premenopause? What does that look okay, like? So, so the symptoms that I have been experiencing going through premenopause is mood swings for sure, hot flashes, sometimes cold flashes, sometimes hot and cold, you know, and um, my periods are inconsistent. Like I could go months without a period. Like I can go like six months. I think the longest I've gone is like eight months. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm done. And then my period will come. (laughs) Like, wait a minute. (laughs) Like I don't even have any supplies at this point because I thought it was done. (laughs) So yeah, so very inconsistent uh, periods. But like at this point, I'm down to like maybe three times a year I may may get my period. Yeah. So, but I think the worst of it for me is definitely the mood swings. Like, um, you know, I try to be in a good mood. I do things to be in a good mood, but some days I'm just like, what, what do you want? You know, like, it's like, Hey, you know, it's, but it's beyond my control. You know what I'm saying? But I am looking into, I really want to, just like I did with fibroids. I really want to talk about premenopause. I feel like we don't talk about that enough. That's another conversation because if you're lucky, you're going to get older. You know, getting older is actually a luxury. It's nothing to feel bad about because a lot of people don't live to get older. And I feel like it's such a blessing to say, hey, I'm 55. And, you know, I have so many friends that have didn't even get to see 55. So with that said, I definitely plan on having more conversations about premenopause as well, because, you know, I know it's not sexy to talk about it, but it wasn't sexy to talk about fibroids before. And now all these celebrities are jumping on the fibroid train. Everybody's talking about their fibroids now. And Mm -hmm. I want to do the same thing with menopause. You know, new to you is all about health and wellness. So how would you say your fitness or wellness routine either evolved or changed in your fifties? I would say that my health and wellness routine got a lot more serious as I got older. You know, I think when you get older, you have to make your health more of a priority than you, you know, do when you're younger. It just is like all of a sudden, like, you know, I think at 40, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I need readers now. I can't read the menu anymore (laughs) without some glasses. You know, my knees are not what they used to be from wearing heels, from modeling for years and just even being on housewives. You know, we always try to look fabulous and walk in with our, you know, fabulous heels on and stuff. So um health again you know at this age it's it's not an option you have to actually take care of yourself as you get older because things no matter what the shell looks like on the outside I know I got you know I had my glam this morning and I got my little my little curly wig on right now and 
you know, all this looks good, but on the inside, you got to make sure everything is working properly as well. And you just have to keep tuning it up. It's like a car, you know, it's like a vintage car. Like you, it looks good. You can, you know, you can restore it, but you got to keep it, you got to keep it together. Right. So what kind of things are you um, putting into your body to exude, you know? Okay. Well, I do like a lot of like, um, I'm not a big breakfast person. So I do a lot of like um, smoothies. Like I like to drink breakfast because I'm really not a big breakfast girl. And I did gain some weight during the um, pandemic. And that's another thing about being older. It's so hard to get it off. (laughs) I'm like, I have not eaten anything in two weeks. Why can I lose weight? But I'm just getting older. Your metabolism, you know, slows down as your metabolism slows down as you get older. So um, I do intermittent fasting because I'm actually not, again, I really don't even really get hungry until about three o'clock, to be honest. So I try to eat between three and like eight, like nine latest. And then at that point, you know, I can only eat with so much. So that works for me. Uh, I do take a lot of uh, vitamins. I take vitamin D. Uh, I definitely take, I take, you know, I started taking Omega XL. I used to have so much joint issues, especially my knees, you know, and when I stop taking it, if ever I slack off, I can always tell like, wait, I don't feel myself, you know? So I really, really love, that's definitely my go-to. And they're so easy to swallow. And, you know, I'm not really big, you know, I can't do the big horse peels and all that stuff. Yeah. So for me, it's kind of like my little, I don't call it a secret weapon because it's been around for years, but at the same time, I, I don't think people realize um, just how great it is. It, it really does help me with my overall wellness, just my skin and everything. I even, I think I even sleep better, to be honest with you. Uh, I turned my mom onto it. Like I'm seeing her this weekend for Mother's Day and she's already like, I'm almost out of my mega XL. <laughs> Get them, send me some more. And I, I honestly can't, I, I don't think I can live without it to be, you know, to be honest with you. Yeah. So what are your top skin habits or products for keeping your skin clear these days? I get to try a lot of different products. So I do play around a lot. I, I cheat <laughs> all my products all the time. I'm like, if this is great, there's probably something better. So I do experiment. A lot of women get into the habit of like, oh, this is the moisturizer I use. I've been using this moisturizer for 30 years. This is the, the only one. I would advise you to try different things and see what works for you. Skincare is very individual. I don't really like to say names of products because if I, until I come up with my own skincare line, <laughs> which I am going to be working on very soon, by the way. Um, you know, it's so individual, like what something that works for me may not work for you, but I can definitely say that um, I get facials. I try to get facials once a month. That's something that I definitely swear by. And oh, I also believe in daily exfoliation. Like don't let it get, you know, dry and dull looking before you do it. Like every day I'm like, you know, doing it and I do it like really like vigorously. You know what I'm saying? And it looks like you came from the spa because you're just exfoliating every day. So you never really, your skin never has an opportunity to, to get, you know, collect dead skin. So right. that's a secret. Daily exfoliation, um, facials monthly. You know, if I could, if I had time, I would do facials twice a month if I had time. Um, oh, you know what's good too? You know, those little masks, those hydration masks, you could, they have different things in them. It's like a mask with the eyes out. Yes. I do those a lot too, but, um, you know, you can do your mask at night. Anytime, if you're going to, if you take baths instead of showers, you know, you just throw it on those. I love, and I usually get ones that are infused with, you know, I usually I do the, anything that's hydrating, whether it's vitamin C or, um, collagen, you know, for me at my age, you seem like you are a lot younger than I am. I'm very into anti-aging, um, products. So, Definitely something with collagen. Um, I love and brightening as well. Any kind of brightening situation in there as well. Where do you see your influence in the beauty world? Well, um, you know, when I first started modeling, it was so long ago, to be honest. Um, You didn't really see a lot of Black women being represented on, you know, on makeup brands or, or skincare. You know, we just, it just wasn't super diverse at that time. So I've seen the evolution of like how we really see like women, black women of all different, you know, shades of black, 
you know, who are, you know, being more visible and who are being represented and have their own products and their own skincare lines. A lot of the lines that are not really specifically made for African-American women now offer certain things for us or certain shades for us. And, you know, back in my day, um, you know, we didn't have all of those options, you know, we'd have to mix and all that stuff and, you know, try to figure it out. So I'm definitely seeing us being more inclusive. And, um, you know, when I was coming up, I did, you know, the oil of Olay ads, I actually did a lot of those campaigns. So hopefully I would like to say that my presence on some of those packaging, on some of the packaging, you know, really did affect, you know, where we are today. So how do you personally feel to know that you like literally, you know, broke down barriers? <laughs> and, like, it feels great. It yeah. feels great. You know, I am a very humble person. Like I said, I came from very humble beginnings, a small town in Alabama. Uh, I was always a dreamer, though. Always had ambition. And if I could have told my 10 year old self now that I was going to be who I am today, I would have been like, really? Oh, my God, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Like I could I could achieve all those things. Um, I don't know when it happened. I think I just kept walking toward my purpose. I just kept dreaming and I just kept going for it because now when I look back, I'm like, how in the world did I end up here? And when I look back on the things that I have accomplished and in my life, it's honestly, and I say this in the best possible way, I've actually done so much at this point. Sometimes I actually forget until I like, you know, someone to post something or throw back and I'm like, oh my God, I forgot that I, you know, was a host on Soul Train. <laughs> you know what I mean? I forgot I was on the Cosby show, like, because I'm so busy, you know, walking toward the next thing that I just, you know, it's, you know, when you all look back, like I have to eventually do the book so I can just have one thing that's all together to really properly document my life and my journey because it has been incredible. Thank you, Jesus. It has been amazing. And every time I think, okay, well, I've had a good run. I guess I should just chill now and just be happy that I did as well as I did. I'm like, nope, I got more to do. I have more to do. Um, and that, that feels great. And it feels even better when my fans come up to me and they're like, I just love you. I just love your spirit. <laughs> You're just, you know, you make me, you know, you just give me hope. You know, I love that, you know, you can show your vulnerability, you know, you can just, you know, admit what you're wrong and apologize and just go for it and just be transparent. I just really gave my reality. I just, what you see is what you get. And, you know, when I meet, you know, people, they're like, oh my God, you, you seem just like you are on the show. And, you look just like, matter of fact, you look better than you look on the show in person. So it's it's very, um, there's so much power in just your truth, just being yourself. And, you know, I'm not for everyone. Everyone's not for me. Like, I'm just not everyone's cup of tea. And I'm, you know, everyone's going to have their haters and be like, oh, you know, whatever, whatever. But truth supersedes all of that for me. If I'm living in my truth and I'm just doing the best that I can do, and working with what God has planned for me, I'm good. Like, I'm really, really good. And it feels good to embrace that. There's a part of me that feels like, why not me? You know, why, why not me? And at the same time, it's like, you know, that humility is always like, oh my God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like every job I get, every opportunity I get feels like, the first opportunity I ever got. <laughs> I remember when I first started modeling, my first big break in my modeling and, and um, my modeling career was the cover of Essence magazine. And I remember what that felt like because I was like, I knew my life was going to change. I was like, wait a minute. I grew up like reading Essence and Ebony. Like if I don't do anything else, I have, this is enough for me. This is, and this is amazing. And I knew my mom was going to be proud All my aunts. Like my whole village was going to be proud because I was going to be the cover of a magazine that represents black women so beautifully. Like the women that we look at and we're like, oh my God, who are these women? Like, I want to grow up and be one of these women in this magazine, let alone the cover. So for sure. Well, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us today. This was such a treat. We're definitely, you know, anticipating your book when that comes out yes. <laughs> with yes. all the details and everything. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, it's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy. We only scratched the surface today. Like I, when I tell you I have lived like, you know, everything just really fast forward it. Once I moved to New York, I was like, and then, you know, Europe, I was like, wow. You know, oh, so yeah, we didn't even touch on Europe. Like, <laughs> Oh girl, that's, that's another interview. That's another right. interview <laughs> and a margarita, honey. Definitely. <laughs> It'll all be in the <laughs> well, thank you so much again. It was truly an honor to, you know, be sitting here chatting with you. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Oh, well, thank you. And thank you for your questions. I love your, um, I love that you took the time to ask really, really um, insightful questions. Um, I appreciate that because I do a lot of interviews and, you know, sometimes it's like, how many times am I asking this question? <laughs> so I, I appreciate um the conversation. So thank you. And uh, you were a very gracious interviewer. So thank you.